Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. Okay, so we're going to continue on our exploration of quick measures in Power BI Desktop and maybe better ways of doing them. Last time we covered, we got into start getting into time intelligence and we got into year to date total, which uses the total YTD DAX function. Uh, today we're going to be covering year over year change. Now, the way you create these, you know, hasn't changed at all. Um, and we come down here to time intelligence and we did year to date total last time. We're not going to cover qu quarter to date total. Maybe I'll do that in a later video or month to date total. That's so really similar to year to date total. It didn't seem worth it. So I kind of skipped ahead over here to year over year change. And the way you create it, obviously, is you're going to select it there. You're going to select your value. Uh, again, I, I can't use my date because it's not doesn't have an auto date hierarchy, even though I have I do have date auto time intelligence turned on. Um, and then I can select it out of here. This is auto time intelligence. And I have obviously uh, I created this same as same as before in previous videos. Uh, I marked it as a date table, created it, and that is your value year over year percent. And then I unmarked it as a date table and turned on auto time intelligence, recreated it, and that's value y of y o y percent two. And then obviously you're giving a number of periods. You know how far you know you want to. It's year over year, so it's on how many how many years ahead or how many years behind do you want do you want to compare? And so in this case, you're comparing if you put a one in here, it's actually going to put a negative one in the formula. So you're comparing this year versus last year. Um, that's how it works. We're not going to create it, but I do want to talk a little bit about a little few changes in the data model. Not a lot, but a few. Um, and the other cool thing that we're going to do in this video is we're really going to get delve into this date hierarchy stuff um, and how the auto time intelligence tables work or don't work. You know, depending on your viewpoint. And I know I have I've kind of glossed over those in previous videos and probably some of you that are, you know, have been yelling me, yelling at me to cover that. So, you know, we're going to cover it, OK? <laughs> and I guess I know it solves certain problems, um, but I'm also going to point out the downsides to it. But real quickly, I do have my fiscal year column. I think I had that in my last video. So I have if it's month sort is less than seven, then it's year minus one. Otherwise, it's just the year. So that gives me my fiscal year. So I'm running a, a fiscal year calendar from July to June, essentially. And I made a made I made a change here, as you can see. I have my uh, two calendar years worth of data, 2021, 1, 1 to 20, and two values for each day. Um, but I'm only running 2022 from January to the 7th to to July 31st. Okay. So if you think about that, if I were to filter this to just 2022 fiscal year, right? I only have a month's worth of data. Okay, so my my date, my month ends, you know, my fiscal. So I've only got a month's worth of data for fiscal year 22. Okay. So we're sending the July 1st to July 31st, 2022. Now, if I filter this to 2020. Do the same thing. Now I've got January 1st, and then I can sort descending to June 30th. Okay, so I only have half a year's worth of fiscal data for fiscal year data for 2020. Versus 2021, I have a full year's worth of data for it. Okay, and it's going to become. I'm not just covering this just for no apparent reason. So we're at ascending. So I've got July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. So I have a full fiscal year's worth of data for 2021. And that'll be important and we'll get to it. Okay, but I wanted to make sure you understood what the data is. Now let's first cover these card visuals at the top here. These card visuals are here to keep us honest, <laughs> right? So all I've done uh, in this one right here is I've just, I'm just summing up the value. So table value, I'm just summing up, but I have this filtered for just 2021. OK, so 2021. Is all but down here you can see I've got my filter to 2021. This is 2022, same setup. And then this is a quick calculation. So I just hard code in, give me 2021, give me year of 2022. These are calendar years. Uh, I sum X across them, do the divide of current minus previous divided by previous. Give me my percent change, right? That's how, you know. That's if we wanted to hard code this stuff. 
These card visuals are the same setup, but they're for fiscal years. So fiscal year 2022, you can see it's really low. We only have a month's worth of data versus fiscal year 2021. We have more data. And same kind of setup as far as the change, you know, the percent change, right? I'm hard coding fiscal year 2021 and fiscal year 22, doing the division, easy peasy. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this is when I have it marked as a date table, this is what comes back from the quick measure for year over year change, right? So it creates a variable for previous year. It does a calculate for the sum of the value. And then it's uh, my old friend date add. <laughs> date add is a, is a time intelligence function. It takes a column of dates. And as you can see, it takes a param. There's that one where that one comes into play. So it says minus, minus one year. So it's going to change it's essentially going to take all the dates and kind of in that to column and dial them back by a year um, and then use that as the filter for the calculate. OK, so then it's going to do a divide by the sum of the table value minus your previous year, divide by your previous year, right? So that's that's how that one works. Now, the other one is very similar. It gives us some warnings and stuff like that, but at the end, there you can see that it's using the same exact formula more or less, but it uses that it uses the date hierarchy of the date dot date. OK, that's really the only difference in the date ad. It has dates, dates, date dot date. So it's using the date hierarchy. All right, so. Let's try it out in a single table data model. So in this case, we have year is from coming from our table. We have our value year over year percent value year, year percent too. And if you shouldn't be surprised, it doesn't work whatsoever, right? So. You know, the calculate to time intelligence functions, they really don't want a single table data model. They don't like them. You get re get wrong results with them. Uh, versus if I instead use year, I should have, there's the highlight. So there, I'm bringing in year from my dates table. There's my value year over year percent, value year over percent, year over year percent two. And one of them turns returns the correct answer. There's our 39.50, which agrees with, up there right and that is our value year over year percent the one with auto time intelligence does not work okay so this is where i said i was going to get into some of this date hierarchy stuff so the reason it doesn't work right is because it's using this date hierarchy and state this date hierarchy actually kind of lives in a separate table uh, which seems kind of weird that it you know you would think that it shows up in this table right <laughs> and Here's the here's the here's my month, and so I I put my or my year uh, from here in this column, and I use that. And you would, it would seem from this perspective when looking at it this way that this column should filter that date hierarchy um, because it's filtering that date column, which is it's all, all seems like it's all part of the same thing. When in reality, that date hierarchy is actually like a separate hidden table. Um, which is probably why it doesn't work. Uh, it seems like it could work if they just had the right relationship created to that that table. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and ponder the intricacies of how Microsoft set all that stuff up. But you can see, you can 100% see if you bring up tabular editor or any tool, similar tool, you can actually see that the date hierarchy actually sits in a separate date table um, that's hidden and it's got a big long grid on it, right? So that's so can we get this to work, right? Can I get this to work? Yes, we can get it to work if if we use the date, the year from that hierarchy. So if I bring this into the hierarchy and you can see it says date year, then you can see that in, and actually <laughs> this is so weird uh, because it's like the, it must be that the table relationship only flows from the date hierarchy table to my uh, my dates table um, because both measures actually end up being filtered and being correct when I use the, the auto time intelligence hierarchy, right? So, and again, this is this is the confusion in my opinion, right? I'm going to create a dates table and I get this date hierarchy and I, I maybe have a, I have, a, I have a date in my table because I have to, because I have to relate my date table to my table, you know, and it's just, it's in one instance with one version of the formula, it works, you know, in this circumstance or that circumstance, depending on what, what column you use, you know, in this other format, it works like kind of the opposite way. It's just, it's super confusing to me. Um, and, and, but in the fact that the only way to get both versions to work is is to use the hierarchy from the dates table is just terrible. It's the worst, it's the worst possible solution. 
I mean, I have literally, and I know there's videos about this too, but I have personally shrunk people's PBX files by over 40% by simply turning off time intelligence. So think about that. You're taking a 100 gig PBIX file and shrinking that down to 60 gigs. That's huge. It's a huge savings. Um, so time and auto time intelligence, read anybody on the subject and they're going to tell you it's a bad idea, right? So that's why I've been, haven't been really focusing on, on you know, that this is a, this is a solution to the problem because it's, it's just, it's awful. Don't, don't do it. Like if this is the only way to make it work, then it's even worse than <laughs> I've been letting on. All right, so let's talk now about, okay, what's a, what's a better way of doing this? Oh, and the other thing that I want to point out before I move on. So unlike total YTD, right, which had some concept of fiscal year, DATAD does not have any concept of fiscal year. Okay, all you get is give me, give me some dates, give me an interval, uh, number of intervals, and give me the interval, right? So year, month, day, et cetera. So there's there's no way that you can basically turn this in and make this operate in a fiscal year capacity, okay? Because it doesn't have any of those extra optional parameters like total YTD did in order to basically make it aware of fiscal fiscal years and fiscal calendars and that sort of thing, you know. And and like the you know if we could put in something here where we tell it, hey, the end of my year is 6:30 like we did in total YTD, then you know we. It would, we could probably make it work with fiscal year, but with only this, you know, and quite a few time intelligence functions just have no capacity to understand fiscal years, we're really kind of at a loss to do anything with this in terms of fiscal years. Okay, so I wanted to, and that's this really comes from, you know, so if you want to dig, get get deeper into kind of this method and other method, methods, right, I have it to bleep with data add and all of that kind of fun stuff. So. That I'll, I'll post those links in the uh, I'll post these links or a link to this article in the uh, description for this video. All right, so let's uh, let's go back to better year over year change. Okay, what is a better way to do this? Well, you might expect it's going to involve a table bar and, and an aggregator and that sort of thing. So, and that's what we have here. So this is one way to construct this. Okay, so what I've done here is I, okay, I'm going to get the max year that's in context. I'm going to filter all of the table for the years that are in that year, right? Um, and I'm going to do a sum X across it, you know, of the value. For previous, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same exact thing, but I'm going to take all of the years that are equal to year minus one. Imagine that if you want to if you want to compare last year, just take the year and subtract one from it. You know why in the world are you messing around with data add and all this other craziness? And of course, then we have you know the, the usual suspect formula: divide the current minus the previous by the previous. And as you can see over here, we get our thirty nine point five, which agrees with our percent change that we're looking for. Okay, and this and in this it works with year coming from table. Imagine that. In this version, I'm taking my year from my dates column, okay? Or my dates table. And it, it still works. What if, what if we use year from our date hierarchy? Does the method actually work? Let's add that there. Hey, look at that. Still works in that case. So three for three. Doesn't matter where you bring your year in from. This method works. You don't have to worry about where, where you're pulling your year column from. This method works every time. Now, you may say, okay, Greg, you know, that's fine, but you know, you're you're using all there, and you know, that's that's not good because you know you're you're ripping out context. You know, you might have things that are filtering that visual and things like that. It's like, okay, that's a fair, fair statement. So let's take a look at a different way of, of constructing that measure. Better year over year three. Again, in this case, I wanted to kind of demonstrate that you don't even need a year column in your table. All you need is the date, right? All you need is a date column. So I take my year, my max uh, table date. So I got now I have my year. I didn't need a year column even. 
uh, for my current, again, it's I'm just sum X, whatever's in context in the table. OK, so it's just going to sum X of the, you know, for the value. And then for previous, I'm going to do a filter all selected of table where the year of the date is equal to year minus one, sum X the value. Divide current minus previous by previous. And lo and behold, drum roll. And I totally did that. You should probably select something, Greg. You know, it work. It still works. Of course, it works. Doesn't matter, right? So another way of constructing it. Now, something you that you again, you know, if you think about what's going on here, um, for calendar year 2022, calendar year 2022, I only have January 1st through J through July 31st. Okay, and I'm comparing that to a full calendar year of 2021. And you might say, you know, well, that's not really fair. You know, I'm only you only want to compare the you know the dates that you have in your year with the dates you know that are in 2021. Um, you know, so I should be comparing January 1st, 2021, to to July 31st, 2021, with my dates that I have in July, which are from January 1st, 2022, to July 31st, 2022. Right? Otherwise, you're kind of comparing apples and oranges. You're comparing a a complete year versus a partial year. But how do you do that with with data? How do you do that with this, right? Can't really. So, how do you, but you can using my method with just yeah. It looks maybe looks a little bit, but it's really it only looks this way because I'm being very deliberate about the steps just to make it super obvious how this works. So I get my max here. I get my max and my max date. I get my min date, right? So now the max is going to be July 31st, 2022. The start date is going to be January 1st, 2022. Now I can calculate my end dates that I want to compare those with. Okay, so I can use date, year, end date minus one, month of end date, day of end date, previous date start. I'd use my date function again, year of start date minus one, month start date, day start date. So what that's going to return is previous date end will return July 31st, 2021, and previous date start will return January 1st, 2021. I can then do the same sum X filter all table year equal year, but for my previous, now I can say filter all table where the date is less than or equal to the previous date and the date is greater than or equal to the previous start date. Right, so now I'm comparing apples to apples. I'm comparing January 1st to July 31st between 2022 and 2021. You can do the same divide current minus previous, previous. And drum roll. So now it's it's a much different number, right? Now it's, there's only a 2% difference between there versus a, a negative 40% difference, okay? And it makes sense, right? I'm now, I'm, now I'm actually comparing <laughs> apples to apples. I'm comparing, you know, to the same date range for both years. So obviously it's not going to be the huge difference because it is randomly generated values. And so they're going to come out probably, you know, in the it's going to come out in the wash to a large degree um, when you actually compare apples to apples. So but you can't really do that, right? It's really easy once you once you have your base. Once you have this base, it's really easy to kind of extend it into, hey, I want to do it this way. Now, you know, there's I'm sure there's somebody out in the crowd that's yelling same period last year, blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's fine. Yes, you know, you know, but you have to learn how all those functions work and, and they're very poorly documented. And, you know, and this is very simple DAX code. There's not a lot to this. It's the same pattern um, that you're doing. So better way, not better way, you know, you can decide that. And again, obviously it still works regardless of 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 what where I'm getting my, I should have added those in the opposite order, where I'm getting them, they, they still return the same values, right? I mean, it all works. doesn't matter where, doesn't matter where we pull the year from. All right, so now the other thing, the other thing that you can't really do with data, right, is the fiscal year stuff, right? Because there's really, data has no concept of fiscal year. But how do you do fiscal year when you want to compare fiscal years between, you know, year of year percent change? Well, again, using my method, it's super simple. In fact, you'll see that this looks exactly like the first formula. 
The only thing I did was instead of instead of using my year column, I used my fiscal year column. It's that easy, right? It's the same formula. And you can do that, you know, if I wanted to modify the other versions of this with that, you can use fiscal year versus calendar year. Super simple, same exact formula. So so this when I say better, when I when I say better, I'm, I'm sure there are people that are yelling at me because you know, I'm not using time intelligence functions and that. But it's it's like, well, you know, time intelligence functions, not all of them are fiscal year aware. And so if you learn this method of how to construct your measures for things for time intelligence purposes, then it, it's it's super simple to flip them back and forth between year, calendar year, fiscal year, whatever you want to use. It's it still works the same way and it's the same pattern versus OK, in some cases, total YTD includes the ability to do fiscal year, but data add doesn't. So now I need to use something else like same period last year. Or who knows what you, you what you're going to use, right? The time intelligence functions are all over the board and whether they support <clears throat> time intelligence or not. So again, learn a simple way of doing things that always works. That seems to me to me that seems a lot makes a lot more sense versus trying to remember 70,000 different rules about you know how calculate works or how these time intelligence work and where what what column to pull in from what table just you know why are people complicating their lives that way i have no idea so that is all for today i think i got everything in this video that i wanted to get in i there's i, I get into making these videos and i forget you know i'm like oh i wish i'd have covered that um so i hope i've covered everything um hope this is interesting we'll continue on with these uh, I need to change it up a little bit, so I'll have to find some other topics to rant about, um, and then we'll maybe come back to quick measures. But um, that's all for today. Really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you later.